Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Sarah. If you're new here, then welcome. And if you return, and thank you as always for coming back. I post new videos every week on productivity, mindset, working online, starting your own business, and some routines thrown in there as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, then consider subscribing. Today's video is slightly different. I've started this wedding series planning video because I know there are people in the same shoes as me planning their own wedding, maybe planning a destination wedding like me. So I wanted to share this journey with you. I'll be uploading new videos on this on different topics for every video to hopefully help you with your journey. If you're a bride to be then we can help each other, you know, like even in the comments with helping each other with different questions and just sharing information to make this journey a little bit smoother. For those of you who have never seen me before, I am from the UK, my partner is Italian, Sicilian. He proposed to me a couple of months ago and we are planning, we live in Thailand, we're planning our wedding in Italy and we met in Australia. So we are, we're all over the place. <laughs> Obviously the venue is one of the most important things when it comes to your day, to my day. And I think once you've got that ticked off, I feel like that's the biggest, like for me in my eyes, it's like the main thing. Once I've got that t like ticked off, the, ticked off the list, I can then branch out to other things surrounding that. I wanna talk about what questions we need to ask and to consider when we're talking to potential venues, how I'm finding the venues, what platforms I'm using, and anything that can help you and me along the way to choosing the right venue for our very special day. So just to give you a bit of uh, information, if you didn't watch my previous video on my vision for the wedding, we're having around 60 to 80 guests. That could change, but that's the vision. 60 to 80 guests in Sicily. We're having our ceremony and the, the wedding party in the same place. So the venue that we're going to choose has to cater for both the actual ceremony and the party afterwards. Just in case you're on the same wavelength as me and you like the same things, I thought I'd show you so you can get an idea of what I'm looking for and maybe it's something that you're looking for as well. All right, so this is the kind of vision I have in mind for my special day. Let me just put that across for you. So as I mentioned, we're going to get married in the same place as the actual wedding party, if that makes sense. So we need to find a venue that caters to both. And ideally, I just want like a very rustic natural environment for the ceremony and for the actual party afterwards. This is the vibe I'm going for. Now, as you can see, I love beige. I love neutrals. I love just that Italy. Like for me, this picture down here is just so Italian. It's so beautiful. I want round tables for my day. I just feel apparently long tables are in at the moment, but I feel that round tables are just easier for people to get up and dance and sit down if they want to. They don't have to walk around the whole table. I feel like it gives gives a, a more of a flow. Then um, just these beige, like the architecture, the this historical kind of buildings, the bricks. I just love all of that fairy lights, obviously. And that's the vibe I'm going for, just to, just to give you, because maybe you're gonna watch this after I've done my wedding and you might see a completely different set out to what I've gone for eventually. But I just had to create a vision board for each section of my wedding, just so I'm clear when I talk to suppliers, when I talk to uh, the venues, I can show them what my idea is and if it's something they can cater to or not. Right, so this is the platform that I'm currently using. Again, this might change, but this is what I found initially to be quite helpful for finding venues, finding DJs, finding bands, uh, makeup artists, caterers, like all that kind of stuff. So I found this very, very useful. They've spelled my name wrong, but that's okay. And they give you suggestions based on what you've previously searched for. These are the countries that they're currently using this platform in and you can obviously if you get married in one of these countries then it'll be helpful for you and they'll give you suggestions based on the country as you can see they've got things on here like agendas budgeters wedding site if you want one i think we will have a wedding site eventually uh, providers tables you can actually i think you can actually set up tables with names in here yeah so you can actually add in different guests eventually. So I think this will be really helpful when it comes to the actual planning of the day. Then you've got, um, what else is there? Clothes, okay. Providers, wedding videos, photographers, music, best friend. Like it just makes you think about everything. And I, I like that. I like that it's just got everything there for you. Then you've got everything to do with the bride. And I think the wedding dress category 
will be hidden from your husband. So if your husband, husband-to-be, logs onto this, he the wedding dress to do with the bride is all hidden from him, so he can't see it, but he can see the other things that you need to have in common, if that makes sense. Not that, the, that my husband-to-be is doing that much of the planning, <laughs> but it's just good to know. The thing that I like about this is you can actually see other couples and maybe take some inspiration from them. And it's got some of their pictures, obviously they've agreed to this, but it's just got some of their pictures and information on what they chose. So these are the services that they would have chosen. And I just think that's beautiful. I think that's so, so helpful. If you like the look of somebody else's wedding, then why not take inspiration from it? And if you like the photographer, for example, you can just go ahead and like, I like this look, for example, so I can just go ahead, go down, which photographer did they use? All right, let's just reach out, reach out to this photographer, for example. This is not sponsored at all in any way. This is just something I came across and I find it very, very useful. And Raphael and Marta, <laughs> hope you don't mind being featured in my YouTube video. Now, I don't want to speak too soon, but this is one of the venues that I saw straight away. And I was like, that is me. That is, that is me. Very beige, very beautiful, very Italian. They had an indoor backup for bad weather, hopefully not, but it's just something to consider. And just very, oh, I don't know, it just, you know, it gave me that really nice feeling straight away. And I was just like, yeah, that's definitely beautiful. And that's definitely a bit of me. So I'm hoping that this could be the winning venue and that we can just get this booked in. I am manifesting it. So I've created a, four, I think it's like four pages questions to ask the venue that you're potentially looking at, thinking about. So at least then when you do the calls with the venue or if you go in person, you, you need to ask them questions. You can write down like on the notes what they say because trust me, you will forget what each person is saying and you just want to keep a track and then you can compare them then to each other. like. You can print them out, write the answers, and compare them to each other to make the best choice for you. Of course, I've done my best with the questions. I've asked people, I've researched online. Of course, I can't have every question covered, but I've done as much as I could. I've got my laptop here, so I'll refer to it. And if you've got any suggestions for questions that you recommend asking, maybe you've been through this process, maybe you're a wedding planner, whatever it is, help us out and comment down below. I'm gonna read through each question. Again, you can print this out, keep it for you, or you can write your own alongside these, but I think they will help. First question, what is the rental fee and what is included in that price? How many people can this location accommodate? Are tables, linens, plates, chairs, and glasses included in the cost? So one of our venues, for example, has all of those things included in the particular cost. So that's really helpful because I know some people you're literally just paying for an empty shell and then you need, you've you got to ask these questions like what exactly is included in the cost? I'm sorry for the light changing because we're dealing with natural light and I'm sorry for the background because we are moving apartments and it's all up in the air. How many hours are included in the rental of the space? How early can we arrive? How late can we leave? I think that's something that people often overlook because they get so excited about like, oh my gosh, they've got our date, it's available. They are so excited and like caught up in the other details so they don't think of a very basic but easy question to miss. What time can you arrive and what time can you leave? You don't want to end up thinking you're going to party until whatever time and then the, the, the venue tell you like, no, we can only do it until this cut off time. Are there any noise restrictions? What is the cost of the ceremony? So what's very common in Sicily is people go to church to get married and or they go to the register, they go to the office and sign. So we have to go to the office and sign because we're not particularly religious so it's best for us to go to the office and sign but we're still going to do like the actual ceremony on the day in the venue as well as the wedding party afterwards. Does that make sense? So we need to do like two different things. So it's just something to think about. So I've written here, what is the cost of the ceremony? Like is it an extra cost to set up because you have to set up chairs and, and an arch or whatever it is, right? Question to ask, do you have any inventory of decor that's included such as candles or fairy lights? So this is also one of our venues mentioned that they had those included in the cost. So that's something to consider. Do you have a, suge a suggested list of vendors for florist music and other services like catering as well or are we limited to specific caterers so again sicily has its own way of doing things a lot of the venues are they work exclusively with like let's say 
couple of caterers, maybe two or three catering companies, which are amazing, thank goodness. But you just want to ask that question because you don't want to like fall in love with the uh, fall in love with the menu, fall in love with the venue, and then you can't have like the dream catering company that you wanted. For example, do you have a room available for guests? on site if so what's the cost of course if you've got family coming from overseas you don't really want them to book a hotel and then have to travel a long way to get to your venue all that kind of stuff especially for older people as well if you've got older people coming you don't really want them to struggle getting around what is the nearest accommodations for guests to stay if they don't have it on site or if there's an overflow then you need to know that maybe they have discount so we have discount i think discount or like a specific deal i say that as if we booked the venue we haven't but i've got my heart set on one particular venue will the newlyweds have a room to stay in for the night it's common that venues do offer that for the newlyweds if they've got a room available so yes do you have a backup plan in case of rain one of the most important questions you need to know of course we don't want it to rain on the day but if it does you want to know that you've got a backup plan indoors or covered somewhere so yeah apparently it's good luck i think if it rains on your wedding day but i don't want that to happen to me have a dedicated member of staff or wedding coordinator available on the day of the wedding so i am not getting a wedding planner call me crazy it's we are trying i mean like it's a, a massive part of the budget that i'm trying not to spend i hope i don't regret it but i and again, I hope I don't regret saying this, but I'm pretty hands-on, even though I'm not in the country, which is my, my, my biggest concern. But our families are very like helpful, hands-on. My, my husband-to-be comes from hospitality. I come from hospitality. His brother comes from um, hospitality as well at the back end. So we are a good team. So I'm hoping that we will not need to hire a wedding planner. I'm sure there's some wedding planner watching this like, girl, you have no idea. And I'm sure I don't. <laughs> but I'm trying to save money in that area because we simply don't want to spend money on that. Yeah. So my point was in our questions that we asked our venue, they actually had someone, a member of staff that's included with whatever we're going to pay that can actually run the day for you. So that's a huge relief and a huge help. Are we able to have a rehearsal at the venue? If so, what's the cost? So I was think I did rehearsal or like the day before because our families haven't met properly and our friends haven't met. We don't want the actual wedding day to be the first day that everybody's speaking like meeting because it's awkward everybody's like hyped and emotional like our families will be emotional and you just don't want to add to that any kind of anxiety the day before i was thinking to either pay a little bit extra for that venue or somewhere else just to break the ice have some drinks with people get some like nice casual food on the go and just to break the ice before the actual wedding day so that's something to consider ask is there a cake cutting fee if we choose a cake made on site is the fee waived our venue, our venue, we don't have one, but the one that I want offers a cake included in the price and cake cutting, but I know some, some places are not like that. Do you have a designated room for wedding party to get ready? For me, very important question. I am the typical bride that wants the typical photos with her bridesmaids, getting ready with a glass of champagne, hair being done makeup be like i want that i don't even know if i'm gonna get my hair and makeup done but anyway i want those pictures and i really would ideally like it on site so that's a good question to ask just to make sure that everybody is able to get ready at ease not all the guests obviously but like the main ones uh, and close family members and the groomsmen and all the kind of stuff so that for me was important but we have a little issue with this anyway how do we how much do we need to pay for deposit? When do we need to pay it? Is it refundable? And like, what's the cancellation situation? Hopefully that doesn't need to happen. And that's all I've got for now. Again, if you've got any suggestions, any recommendations on questions, of course I've not got them all down here. And obviously each person will, it will depend on your situation, where you get married, what the procedure is, all that kind of stuff. So obviously it depends on you. But if you've got any recommendations, drop them down in the comments below. This worksheet, you can print as many as you want. I'll put the link in the description box down below as well. And yeah, that's it. So hopefully by the next time we catch up, I might have some news on the venue. Next video is going to be, which I'm really, really excited about. It's going to be me 
proposing virtually to my bridesmaids which is so funny because the people who are my bridesmaids I've told people like I'm not really considering bridesmaids and I've always downplayed it so that's going to be very exciting because they're not going to really expect it and I'm going to hopefully catch the reactions I've asked the boyfriends to record I've sent the packages so I've made like proposal boxes which I'll go through all the details in the next video like what I bought to put in it and I'm in a difficult situation where I don't live in my home country some of my bridesmaids don't live in my home country so I've had to send things across the world basically but I'm hoping that we can get some things on camera so we can get the reactions and I can share those beautiful moments with you. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.